Greetings, one and all, to the most cursed, most cringiest corner of the internet. A YouTube channel content creator, actively alienating everyone from both the analog and digital world. Well, welcome, good evening, wonderful dice of all alignments. I am a Lunar D8. This is Let's Play Sunflower. The smell of burning skin pulls me from my bed sheets. A pair of hungry sunflowers amass in a tight little cluster outside my window. <coughs> they stare at me with wide, unblinking eyes. Oliver, breakfast is ready. It's not polite to keep the cook waiting. If it was up to me, I'd sleep forever. But in this house, your dreams end as soon as breakfast is ready. No exceptions. Say something so I know you're still alive. They pulled the locks off my doors ages ago, so I need to get up before Mom takes any serious action. <coughs> it's not like she hasn't done it before. Standing cross-armed in the middle of the room while I scramble to find a pair of socks or pants or underwear. Shame is an excellent motivational tool, after all. Funny enough, I found out the best way to avoid those situations altogether was to just sleep in jeans and a t-shirt. Sure, it's uncomfortable, but at least this way I can leave the room whenever I want. And as long as I look presentable, that's more than enough for them. I just gotta not mess up this time. Sliding on a pair of flip-flops, I make my way into the kitchen. The stench here is overpowering, but at least it's familiar. Mom waits for me with a tray of something in her left hand. Good morning, sunshine. Happy Sunday. Make sure to finish this before Judith picks you up for church, okay? She aggressively slides the tray across the table. The head of a massive sunflower stares at me from a cradle of flaky pie crust. Eat your breakfast, Oliver. The only thing I put in it was motherly love. Now stop whining like you're some tit-sucking toddler and eat. A web-like structure glistens between the flesh of the flower and the pie crust. It looks sharp, like the gills of a suffocating fish. Yes, mother. Good boy. I don't care what Miss Lord says. Autism is no excuse for being a picky eater. And besides, something tells me you'll feel much less picky after you start trying new things. Obviously. As I grab my fork, the unblinking eye of the sunflower starts to twitch a little. Every petal begins slowly folding towards the center. There is only one way out of there. This isn't there. I fold my tongue into the back of my throat and get ready. Oh, thank lord. Ooh, that must be Judith then. Can't keep my future daughter-in-law waiting, can I? Wasting not a second of her time, Mom scuttles out of the kitchen. I grab a spatula from the cupboard and rush her sunflower pie to the garbage disposal. There's a bit of a struggle at first, but eventually... 
I managed to press all of it down into the void. <coughs> Thin yellow ribbons start to stretch out of the hole as I flick on the switch next to the sink. The vortex of blades make quick work of my breakfast. Turning on the sink to help drown out the noise and the wash of the spatula, I sprinkle a few crumbs and twitching petals back onto the uh, aluminum pie tin. Not the most convincing display of a well-eaten breakfast, but it's better than nothing. I wait a believable amount of time before entering the living room. Instead of Judith, though, Miss Lawrence is the one waiting for me on the couch. Ah, there is my star pupil. I know I haven't been around much this week, but I hope you and Violet have been enjoying your last few days as seniors. He must be, considering how much time they've been spending together. Sure hope a certain someone's niece doesn't end up getting pregnant. Autism and epilepsy would do quite the combo, wouldn't it? Oh, Dolly, what's the harm in letting kids be kids? They're both 18. Hardly children anymore, don't you think? Well, they're not exactly adults either. Lighten up. Maybe go out in the patio and mow a little bit of the grass. Miss Lawrence takes a stray $20 bill off the table and hands my mother a bag of grass clippings. Mom rolls her eyes and stuffs the plastic baggie behind the folds of her blouse. Whatever you say, Luis. Sunday is the day of rest, right? Miss Lawrence is here to take you to church, Oliver. Apparently the Helvig family is having car troubles with all their corvées and Judas minivan. Horrible luck, really. If you're out here, then I assume that means you've finished your breakfast. Yes, mother. Good. Go put on something more respectable before you leave. You're going to a place of worship, not a one of you in Ashton's shitty punk shows. Run along now, Oliver. Oh, one more thing. Say goodbye to your father before you go. You spent a lot of time in the backyard yesterday. He needs to check you for ticks. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Dad. What do you want? I'm going to church and spending time with Violet. I won't be back for a bit, so... Come closer. I do as I'm told and move closer to him on the bed. I see the candle lighter next to us on the dresser and began holding my breath. You're clean. Have fun with your girlfriend. Thank you, Dad. I'll be home later. Be safe. Dad folds into himself and goes back to sleep. I eye the candle lighter next to him one more time and take a deep breath. Miss Lawrence declines to stay for coffee and escorts me out of the room. Christ on a cracker. What on earth happened to you, Dolly? Miss Lawrence pinches the bridge of her nose and sighs. Sorry, sorry. That was unprofessional of me. Are you doing all right now, kiddo? If it's any comfort at all, there's no such thing. Don't worry, Nightmare or not, I won't let anything happen to you. You're all going to graduate one way or another. Otherwise, I won't be a very good teacher, would I? But enough of that. 
Let's get you where you need to go. Miss Lawrence lets the Helvig twins, Judith and Andy, know that I'm on my way to their house. She says that Violet will be waiting at our normal spot on the beach once I'm done with everything else. She urges me to enjoy my time with her. Other than Andy ducking out for the jog mid-sermon, church is normal as normal can be. And after a wonderful lunch of very normal fried chicken, very normal sweet tea, and exceptionally sweet biscuits, Judith and I find ourselves alone in her bedroom. It's just not fair. You're skinny, but it's not like you're starving yourself. There's no reason you shouldn't be allowed to prepare your own meals. Judith, the oldest of the twins, a girl who's been my best friend for as long as I can remember. For her, speaking is easy. I close my eyes and take a deep, healing breath. Thank you, Judith. But it's no big deal, really. Yes, it is, Oliver. Look, sunflower pie is just the newest homeopathic craze sweeping the nation. Her support group likely recommended it to her after browsing the internet for five minutes. This will pass just like any other fad. It's whatever. They're trying to cure you again. I can only shrug. Judah's hands curl into petite shaky fists. She's delusional. Sunflower pie, seriously. Whatever your mother thinks she's feeding you, it doesn't exist. And if it did, it shouldn't matter. You don't need a cure. You never needed a cure. You've kept me in your life since we were children, and that's no accident. It's clear Miss Lawrence did a good enough job teaching you. So why do your parents even care? I don't know why they care, but they do. You can't really change what people care about. It doesn't matter if I've improved, not really. They won't stop caring until I'm either normal or dead. That's just the way it is. Or, Judith begins anxiously, chewing the side of her thumb. Or what? Or until they think you're dead. Excuse me. Come live with me. Live with you. At least until the summer ends. And you and Violet go to college. You know I can't do that. Why not? It feels dishonest. Oliver, they're only going to get more insane the closer you get to moving out for good. But my parents are cops. We can keep you hidden. I'll keep you safe. You don't understand. What don't I understand? It's... It's dishonest in more ways than one. I... I don't like lying to people. That's your reason? Don't be selfish. If anything happens to you because of them, I wouldn't be able to live with myself. Don't say things like that. I'm not your responsibility. Of course you are. Judith, please. Judith's hands jolt away from me and slowly curl back into her lap. She looks meekly at her feet. Damn it. I'm shouting again. Damn it, damn it. Damn it, I shouldn't have said anything. What's the point of being able to speak if I'm just going to keep losing control? What's the point of talking? I feel the deep wave of shame pass over me as I look her way. I am sorry, I didn't mean to yell at you. No, it's fine. I was yelling too, I guess. Besides, I'm sure she yells at you all the time. It's normal. That's no excuse. It's not your fault a person's home should be a place of rest and relaxation. It should be safe. You just need a calmer environment. I'm sure. So let me help you. See, that's what I'm talking about. Huh? You're sure that's what I need? You're confident about it? Everybody who has these conflicting opinions about what I need. My parents, Miss Lawrence, you. Everybody's confident they know what's best for me. And maybe they really do. Maybe I really am that stupid. But 
but I don't think there's a way to make all three of you happy. Not without becoming something else entirely. I don't think it's possible to give everybody what they want. I feel Judith scoot closer to me on the bed. This isn't the first time she's hugged me on Sunday afternoon, but it is the first time it hasn't made me feel any better. No matter what you become, you'll always be my best friend. You give me so much just by being that, Oliver. Isn't it obvious? She really is a wonderful person. Truly, I'm lucky to have someone like Judith in my life. But it doesn't matter if she's wonderful. It doesn't matter if her intentions are good. Because right now, her hug is just another gift. A meticulously planned gift to make me better. It's all sunflower pie. All of it. And I need to start preparing my own meals. Otherwise, I'm just another tick. I need to go. Already? Yeah, I'm sorry. But there's someone I need to talk with for a bit. You mean Violet, don't you? She's waiting for you, isn't she? You're going to live with her instead, aren't you? No, it's not like that. You don't need to lie to me to make me feel better. She's your girlfriend, after all. It makes sense. You know I'm not lying. It's just... I get up from the bed and make my way towards the door. She's the only one for us that doesn't know what's best for me. I think I need a little bit of that right now, don't you? I see. My offer still stands. It doesn't matter where we really are or what this really is. My offer still stands. Please, if you ever feel like moving out, just remember, you'll always be safe here. I will do whatever I can to make this place your home. I promise. There are many safe ways to remove a tick from your body, apparently. Ammo told me about them recently, he told me last time. Him, Ash, and I were camping. Spinning around, it was cotton swab gently using tweezers. Even basic soap and water works if you're patient enough. As time goes on, our species continues to find more creative solutions to each and every problem we face. A list of ways to effectively and safely remove a parasite from your body will likely grow and grow. But these are things a six-year-old doesn't really know. When you're six years old, you just have to trust your parents that everything will be fine. So when your father says the only way to kill the tick you picked up in the backyard is to burn it off, well, why wouldn't you believe him? You don't think about how needlessly large the flame from the candle lighter is. You don't think about simply heating up a needle instead. You don't think about how the dirt feels against your cheek as he presses you into it. You don't question these things. You just do as you're told. You stare up at the sunflowers your mother just planted, your hungry eyes glaring at you. Warmth and your blood like rising Florida sun. But thankfully, you don't stay six years old forever. Thankfully, you change. You learn. It's unavoidable. Nobody knows that better than Violet. The girl had to grow up faster than any of us. Nobody is better at helping you think of a creative solution to your problems. It's one of the many reasons why I love her. It's... It's why... No. God damn it, no. Violet turns towards my voice. She crawls toward me in the sand. A second pair of limbs twisting around her neck. 
Her voice is smothered by thick roots and stale blood. Oliver, please, run. She collapses into the sand as countless sunflowers shoot happily out of her spine. Her body stops moving, but only for a second. Hungry, the newborns turn their budding hordes, not towards the sun, but to me. Violet's limbs start moving again. I feel my face begin to swell with tears. You. What did you do to her? I did nothing. She was already covered in ticks. She was already sick. It's nobody's fault. Shut up. I grab the candle lighter in my pocket and jab it into his leathery gut. I rest my finger on the trigger and stare into his unblinky eye as Violet's corpse shuffles towards us. Do it. Bite the hand that feeds. It doesn't matter. You are still covered in ticks. You will always be diseased. I feel my blood begin to boil. But then, like cold water rolling over dry, hot sand, something changes. I begin to feel myself age. I feel clean. I pull the candle lighter out of his gut and look at Violet. The wet tears in my eye begin to clear the heat from my vision. Whatever. That word means nothing coming from you. Face too swollen to talk anymore. I turn away from him for good and begin running back to Judith's house. Judith. I frantically search around the living room. A heavy thumping comes from upstairs. My mother stands in the middle of the bedroom of a hungry tin of sunflower pie. Behind her bookcase, I can see Judith hiding a rather large book knife. You didn't finish your breakfast. Why am I not surprised? I bet it tastes like sweaty dumpster fudge anyway, you hack. Judith makes her presence known. Even so, Mom continues walking towards me, her petals reaching outward with every step. Stupid girl. I was going to let you marry him. But now I think he needs a little more time at home, don't you? You don't get to decide that. Before I can say anything, Judith leaps out from behind the bookcase and drives the knife into my mother's back. Even so, Mom doesn't seem phased. This isn't good. Damn it. I rush over and try to help Judith before I can. Both her and the knife are flung away with astounding force. Judith hits the bed. Frame and tumbles onto the mattress. I instinctively rush over to the bed and try to move Judith on her side. She shakes my hands off her body and begins looking around the room. Don't worry about me. Where's the knife? Where's the knife? Eep. Judith grabs my chest and pulls me closer to her on the bed. Shit, shit, shit. You are completely incompetent, Oliver. Can't you see that friends like her will always feed from you until they're full. Shut up. You lay a finger on him and you're a fucking pig food. My my, what a foul mouth. And from say such a sweet looking girl. How curious. See Oliver, you can't even recognize when somebody is taking advantage of you. That's because they root themselves in the back of your neck. That's why you need to pluck them out and burn them off your body. Mom lifts the sunflower side in my face. Now, eat your breakfast. Something loud cracks through the air. And a second time, and a third, and a fourth, and a fifth. Grrrr. Miss Lawrence stands in the doorway, smoke tip billowing from the tip of a revolver. There are tears in her eyes. Good lord, Dolly. What happened to you? Mom grabs her chest 
and falls into the space between Judith and the beds. As she does, Judith leaps up and moves over to the sunflower pie. It squeals in agony as she repeatedly crushes it on her heels. Enough. Both of you. Away from her. Now. The two of you aren't nearly lucid enough. They will only show her down at best. Judith rolls her eyes and leaps over the bed frame. She finds her knife stuck in the wall and pulls it out with a flick of her wrists. Miss Lawrence wipes her sleeve over her face and shakes her head. Already, Mom is beginning to claw at the sides of the bed and pull herself up. Miss Lawrence looks at me with conviction and places the revolver in my hand. Don't worry about Violet. None of this is as bad as you think it is. Oliver, I need you to shoot yourself. Excuse me? Remember everything you experienced tonight as you do. Hold on to it. Learn from it. And I swear no harm will come to you. Are you insane? Oliver, do not do something like that. We need to kill this lady now. Judith and I will find a different way to get out of here. This is your lesson. You need to act while these feelings are still fresh. You cannot be serious. You are dealing with matters far beyond the scope of basic human understanding, Miss Helvig. Trust me, this is the only way for any good to come out of this. Oliver, don't listen to her. This is real. If you shoot yourself, you're going to die. Stop distracting him. The gun feels heavy in my hands. Suicide or murder. Those are my options. That's what I've been given. Those are my gifts. Mom kneels on the ground next to the smashed remains of her sunflower pie. can't make everyone around me happy as much as I want to. I can't prevent myself from changing either, it seems. But sometimes, as much as it sucks, there really is only one good solution to a problem. Maybe this is it. At least this way, if I change, there's a chance I'll change into something I can live with. I place the gun on the bed and kneel next to my mother. Hey. She's crying, obviously. I'm sorry, I know you probably worked hard for that. My mom looks up from the floor. You're a picky eater, Oliver. I shouldn't be surprised you always have been ever since you were a kid. I know. But I'm not a kid anymore. I just wanted you to try something new. I know. Listen, Mom, I don't think I can live with you and Dad anymore. I know it's going to be new and scary. But I'm 18 now, I think I'm ready. And I need you to be ready, too. What I have is almost certainly genetic. Which means, as much as she didn't want to admit it, Mom probably has just as hard a time with change as I do. She always has been terrified of things she isn't prepared for, at least to some degree. Even so, every child should strive to be a better version of their parents. So I owe this to her. I owe this to myself. She isn't saying anything. Am I... Am I really going to do the right thing here? I move closer to her on the floor and put my hand on her shoulders. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Perfectly. That was very well spoken. Good job, son. Don't try to help me anymore. I need a couple months alone, maybe in a couple years. So don't come looking for me. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? She nods. I grab a chunk of the sunflower pie on the floor and rest my hand limp and lifeless. Mom and I work together to put it all the pieces up and put it back in Judas waste basket. Once we're done, I help her on the floor as well. Okay then. I'm going now. I'm sorry it has to be this way. 
She nods, unable to make eye contact with me anymore. I began making my way to the door. Your hair. You used to have such beautiful curly hair. I was so happy when I saw that you ended up getting it from me. So why did you get rid of it? Why? Why did I straighten my hair? It's hard to remember the exact reason, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter. I move in and give my mom a gentle hug. Because I wanted to. It still curls on its own every now and then. Don't worry. It's always going to be there. She hugs me back. That's fine then, I guess. Good. Bye, Mom. Yeah, goodbye, son. Stay safe. There's no way for me to know how much of that was real. Then again, it doesn't really matter. I know what I need to do now. I find Miss Lawrence. Hand Miss Lawrence her gun. It's done. I suppose it is, then. It's tempting just to be homeless for a while. Sirens call. Florida is nice. There's lots of places on the beach where I can sleep. It's not like I have that much to carry around, either. I'm certain I could pull it off, at least until college. Something tells me the solitude would give me plenty of time. To make sense of all this. It would give me time to write. However, I can think of a few people that might be against the idea. Oliver, I... I know. Your offer still stands. Thank you. I walk out the door and into the morning light. Surprising no one, the Florida sun is delightfully oppressive. Just give me a day or two to sleep on it, okay? <laughs>